We now turn ourselves to the issue of rational non-voting that uh, was developed by uh, Gordon uh, Tullock, who's now at George Mason University uh, Law School. What, what Tullock said is that uh, people vote depending upon the expected costs and benefits uh, of voting. If the costs are greater than, than the payoff, then they shouldn't vote. If the payoff is greater uh, from voting, uh, then they uh, uh, should, in fact, vote. Tullock's reason that there is a um, certain benefit that be expected from uh, uh, one party being favored over another. But this benefit is not going to be great because, again, as we recall in an earlier video, the two candidates in many elections are going to be right in the center of the distribution. The di difference between the Democrats and the Republicans can be quite uh, small. But what Gordon says is, let's suppose that, the, that an individual expects the difference to be $10,000 in lifetime, uh, present discounted lifetime uh, income uh, gained. This, this benefit of $10,000, however, has to be discounted by the likelihood that your vote will, will make a difference. He says, let's suppose it's one in uh, 10 million. Uh, uh, that is, it's, uh, if, if tens of millions of people are, are, are voting, then the chances of your, your vote determining the outcome of the election is pretty darn uh, small. If, in fact, uh, one vote uh, made the difference between a vote, you can almost bet uh, there would be a recount and disputed balance and so forth, as we've seen in recent elections. This uh, benefit to B must be discounted by the accuracy of your judgment of, of which uh, candidate is, is to be favored. That is, you know these two candidates, but you can't always be expected to be correct. He says, let's suppose that that probability is, is 0.5. Then he says, let's be very modest here. Let's suppose that the cost of voting is, is only uh, $1. Uh, P up here uh, is equal to the payoff. What is the outcome of this? Should the person actually uh, vote? Well, what he says is that if you put these figures into this formula, then you get $10,000 in benefits being discounted by 1 in 10 million that the vote will actually determine the outcome of the election by a 0.5 probability that, uh, that your vote is cast uh, uh, accurately. And then you take away the minus uh, uh, $1 cost of voting. And again, he thinks that's very modest since it takes uh, people at least 15 minutes to vote and many people earn more than four bucks an hour. Uh, sometimes it costs uh, an hour or two uh, to vote. What's the outcome? Um, minus uh, 0.9995. That is the payoff is negative. And in, in Tullock's view, this, this explains why a lot of people uh, don't vote. Does this mean that no one should vote? Uh, that everyone should stay home? Well, uh, Tullock has a comeback to that. If everyone uh, stayed home uh, and uh, you decided to go to the polls, then the probability of your vote determining the outcome of the election shoots up from one in 10 million to just one. And as a consequence, uh, you should uh, vote. Well, uh, the, this line of argument explains why a lot of people don't vote, sometimes, uh, above 50 percent for national election and maybe 80 or 90 percent don't vote in in local elections it doesn't explain very well why uh, millions of people do indeed uh, take the time uh, to vote now Tullock says let's suppose that the person becomes more uh, intelligent that is in, incurs a great deal of cost trying to become informed about uh, uh, politics uh, and if they become more informed, the only issue that can be changed here is, one, they might have an improved assessment of the difference between the two candidates, and two, it may influence the accuracy of the uh, vote. Let's suppose, Tullock says, that, it, that the cost of becoming informed is $100, which can be a very minus cost. Well, we have the same basic formula, except we add in, oops, we add in uh, this issue here, which is equal to 100. The benefits, B, is equal to 10,000 again, 1 in 10 million for, uh, for D. And because of the uh, information that a person acquires, uh, A goes from 0.5 to 0.8. The cost of voting is still $1, but then you have this added 
$100 in information uh, cost. Uh, you plug those figures in and what do you come out with? You come out with a negative uh, payment, negative payoff of minus uh, or minus 100.9992. Uh, Gordon uh, Tulloch uh, believes that uh, this kind of uh, calculation explains why uh, so many people who do in fact go to the polls uh, go so uh, largely ignorant of, of the issues. Uh, in the United States, sometimes 75% uh, of the people when coming out of polling places uh, can't even name the person that they uh, voted for, much less identify many of the key political issues that the candidate for whom they voted um, actually espouse. Uh, during uh, the campaign. Uh, political ignorance is a, is a real problem, and it's a problem because uh, special interests uh, uh, can, ex can exploit that political interest. That is, uh, special interests can indeed uh, push for uh, policies that uh, favor them, and voters may be unaware uh, of the costs that they will have to pay because of the, of the policies that are passed uh, to pad the pockets of special interests. Uh, thank you for being with me.